again, everyone. Welcome back to the 2015 Twin Cities Film Fest, hosted by the shops at West End and here at the Showplace Icon Theater. We're on the Go96 3 sponsored red carpet. I'm here with Samuel Frederick. You have so many great themes and elements going on in the story. Let's talk about what the seed of the idea for this was. Tell us how it came to be. Uh, well, Rabbit Hole was inspired by a lot of different things. I mean, obviously, it's a lot of it's brought about by my love of Miyazaki, uh, Adventure Time, um, stuff like Dark Souls, but... Um, and these the, are film influences of yours, yes? Film and games, uh, whatnot. Okay. Great. I've always been a huge fan of post-apocalyptic media, and I've, I really wanted to give kind of my own contribution to that. The original idea for this actually started from a, uh, <laughs> a dream I had um, about a year ago where, um, I don't know, I just kind of imagined myself walking down uh, a long sort of dark hole with something at the end that I need to find. And so yeah, that was sort of the, the seed of this idea and from right. there I kind of expanded from that into you know, what you can see. I'm here with Jeffrey Morris. His film is from his Future Dude Productions company. We're going to talk about that. What a great name. The name of the film is Oceanus Act One and there's more to be said about Act One in our discussion. Thank you so much for being here, Jeffrey. Absolutely. This is an amazing piece. First of all, I want to talk to you about the amazing cast that you assembled for this. You are a Twin Cities-based filmmaker. Yes, I am. You shot Oceanus Act One yes. in Los Angeles. Yes. Talk to us about putting that cast together. Malcolm McDowell, Sharif Atkins, Megan Dodds, yeah. Bruce Davison. Yep. Amazing. So for my first you know, real uh, uh, attempt at, at shooting a film like this, I got a shot at, at, at working with a great casting agency. Uh, so Bialy Thomas Casting, they, uh, they saw my script, they saw the designs, the production design work and everything. They got behind me and they said, we can get you a great cast, you know. And I, they said, who would you want ideally if you had a chance to work with anyone you wanted? And I was like, well, I love Bruce Davison. He's one of my favorite actors, right? And so... Been around forever, over yeah. 200 film credits. Yep. Incredible actor. It's yep. so great that he's one of your favorites. Go yeah, on. no, no, Bruce Davison's fantastic, right? So um, they reached out to him. They let him see the script and the designs, and he's like, I'll do it. You know, I was I was blown away. So literally my first day on a set in Hollywood, I'm working with Bruce Davison, right, which is really cool. And then, like, uh, you know, also I, I wanted some really good, solid actors to work with also. I, I'd never worked with Megan Dodds before or, or really see much about her, but, but she was just as fantastic. She had a great reel, and I wanted a really credible, strong female lead, um, someone who kind of, uh, you know, I wanted kind of a Sigourney Weaver, competence and sure. intelligence in yep. this character so but with an emotional range because we're going to see that from Megan's character absolutely. in the film absolutely Megan's fantastic I mean she she's done some work on a lot of television CSI uh, she was also the villain in the movie Ever After so so you know so she's got a little bit of a pet she's got a pedigree and she's done a lot of theater actually you yeah. know so she was she was fantastic um, Sharif Atkins was a no-brainer for me because uh, Sharif was uh, I loved him on the show ER back in the 1990s he played uh, Michael who was the intern and uh, I just think Sharif is just a great actor so I wanted a chance to work with him he commands a presence on screen. He does, he does. And so I was able to get him as well. And so really, uh, Sharif, Megan, and I, we developed a really solid rapport. And we were able to really work together on that set. And you know, it was a very confined set, a very small, and, yep. we, and you pull, we pulled it off. A film that's, that's it's encore screening tonight. We've already seen it once here. You're able to join us from Los Angeles. Charles Hood is joining us. I'm your host, Doug Sidney. Night Owls is his film. Wow, this is a great one. We're going to talk about your film process as a filmmaker, uh, co-writing this script and directing it as well. Talk to us about you wrote your script on a smaller scale because you knew you wanted to bring out some amazing performances. Yeah, um, yeah. My writing partner and I were were looking for some sort of small ideas that we could explore because we knew we had to work from a smaller budget, but yeah. we wanted to, I don't know, I guess explore big ideas within this small uh, space. And so, uh, yeah, hopefully that's uh, what we were able to do. Tell us why you and your writing partner wanted to and decided to do something on your own, and and what those parameters were. Uh, yeah, my writing partner Seth and I, we met at uh, USC Film School, uh, we were both freshmen there and uh, we just been, we've been writing for the last seven or eight years now and we've been writing stuff trying to sell scripts and then it got to a point where I, I've, I've always will just, I mean I, I directed a, a, a very small feature before and a couple of shorts and I decided that uh, we should write something that we can just make on our own instead of trying to sell it off to studios or you know it was just sure. it was time to, to get back behind the camera again. I'm joined by the directing producing duo 
of Brian Netto and Adam, Adam Schindler. They're back with us. If they look familiar on this red carpet, it's because they were here in 2013 with their film Delivery. Horror is your thing. Yes, yes. you love yes. horror. Yes. And on a genre that is popular right now and it's being done well right now, but reviews for your film in this same subgenre are through the roof. Tell us about tackling the script and putting it together. Um, yeah, it was it was a script that uh, just jumped off the page for us. Um, we're really keen on taking genres and kind of mashing them together. Our first film was kind of an amalgamation of a bunch of different things, um, and this script was very much that. So we were very looking for a very specific thing, and TJ and David, who you'll talk to later, yep. TJ and David's. Uh, script nailed every one of those checked one every one of those boxes we were looking for absolutely you said a couple of times we you're a duo you're a tandem you've worked together before talk to us about this partnership that you two have together as filmmakers how it came to be why it's so effective yeah it came to be you know fourth fifth grade we're running around in our backyard really that that far I love it. that long we uh you know vhs camera running around in the backyard okay. trying to tell stories with two people and one camera very creative, um, but I mean, it, it started back then. It was just a matter of bouncing off ideas off of someone else. We had similar interests, but probably different ways of going about it. So that helped us craft something that was unique, but still had both of our sensibilities. So because of that, I think if we had come to each other a little later in life, we might have been more. It might have been more about wrestling between control. But because we grew up with such a collaborative effort, it transitioned into actual professional movie making pretty seamlessly. And I think a lot of people had a hard time understanding the relationship. And we just said, just let us make the movie. Mm -hmm. We'll give you something that you're proud of and something that you'll like. And now I think people understand that it's just it's just truly a partnership, regardless of the titles. It's a partnership. I am now lucky enough to be joined by David White. TJ Simfeld, these two are the writing tandem behind the work that Adam and Brian put together on the screen. You two made this thing happen. Horror's on the menu tonight because that's what you two write. How that's awesome. Correct. Tell that's us correct. about, why do you love horror? Let's, let's start it with that. You probably want to start with me because I think I'm more horrific in general than, than my partner here. Um, it's just something that I grew up with all along. Uh, I remember uh, my family watching horror movies when I was little and I'd kind of like creep down the stairs and listen to the movie and I was a little too scared to go in and actually watch it. Um, but that always captured my imagination and, and kind of took off from there and I've always been a huge fan of the genre. My story's a little different. I feel like I was <laughs> okay, kind of, right. I was pulled sort of kicking and screaming into the uh, into the horror right. genre. Um, I tend net more naturally towards kind of psychological thrillers. So still, okay. still dark, okay. less jumpy, less yep. gory, but I feel like together it makes a really right. nice mix. I'm one of your hosts, Doug Sidney. We're gonna see you back again here on the Go 96.3 FM sponsored red carpet. We're gonna enjoy this film. Yeah.